Today's video is all about the best ship parts in the game and why they're the best. Here are the requirements. You need to be at least level 60. You have to be level 60 or higher to be able to buy the best parts. You also should be shopping from the new Atlantis ship technician because he has everything for some reason. I also recommend that you get the Mantis ship. I have links in my description about that because you get passive perks when you deconstruct and reconstruct the Mantis ship, the Razor Leaf. Here are some ship basics before we get started, and I'm going to show you all the math and the reasonings behind it. But basically, when you are making a ship or upgrading a ship, the more mass you have, the more engine thrust is required to reach a top speed of 150 and a mobility 100. That's where the caps are. So your goal is to use as little engine power as possible. You don't want to allocate power cells to engines if you don't need to. And you want engines that can get these numbers while using the lowest amount of power possible. You also want as much shield as possible because your skills will scale your shields up and without good shields you basically die if you don't cheese the fights. You do not need a big fuel tank or multiple fuel tanks or the end game grav drives to reach every single star system. You just need the ones at level 12 from a rank A ship and if you have Sarah, she boosts your range with her skill on your ship crew so you don't need any end game grav drives or fuel tanks. If you have a maximum of 4 power to engines then you will reach top speed but if your maximum engine power is 12 and you only have 4 power allocated to it, it will not reach top speed. The only way to reach top speed with engines is to have full power to them. So, the least amount of power required to reach full power, the better. This only applies to engines. This means that a small ship with only 4 engine power cells is way better and more efficient than a gigantic ship with 12 power cells. Let's get right into it. The best cockpit in the entire game, which you can get immediately is the Magellan C1 and the reason why is it has the most congruency when latching to front facing landing bays which will save you time when leaving planets or running around on surfaces of planets. It has low mass compared to the other cockpits but also cargo is not important it's it's irrelevant use a freighter secondary ship to exploit infinite cargo space or inlet, a very large amount of cargo space. You don't need to worry about your cargo space on your fighter and flyer ship. So the Magellan C1, best cockpit, let's go to the next. The best docker is actually any of them. It does not matter what you want to use. The slim docker does take up one chunk of space on your ship. I always put mine on the bottom just to make it simple and easy, but you can use the top or the NG2, the 110 DP, which have more connection points. They're all one mass, so it does not matter which one you pick. The best landing bay is the Shipbed 200 landing bay. Now, you have to go uh, to uh, Teo Astroneering, which I made a... Um, a typing mistake. There we go. Fixed it. Teo Astroneering. You also get this from the Razor Leaf. So that's again why I recommend that you just go do the Mantis Quest. Links in the description for that and you automatically get this anyway. It is the only landing bay that has one mass. I will show you now. This here is one mass. All the other ones have much more mass, which means you need more powerful engines. So again, this is the best landing bay in the entire game. Next up, the best cargo hold is the Stormax 30 cargo hold, which you take the cargo divided by the mass, and then that is how much cargo you get per mass point. The highest one is the Stormax 30. Now, I'm going to be real with you on this one. This one, The math is very similar. If you take the best and the worst ones, it's a difference of like 0 0.06. Like Okay, so it doesn't really matter which cargo you pick. Just pick whichever one connects to your, your cargo ship, your freighter best. I really like these Caravel ones because they're really tiny and they clamp on the sides. So you can really make a, you know, a very nice compact ship. But use whatever you want. Just, it really doesn't matter. It, when you're making a freighter, just connect anything that'll connect to anything and you're good to go. The best structures in the game are the Deimos Spine C4. The reason why is it has three weapon slots and it's only two mass and they're spread out so you can attach all of them. 
There is a weapon attachment for the sides of your ship, but most of the time they don't work, and it ends the chain. Next up is the Nova Bracer, which is an extension. It's a one by one. It, it's it's uh it's six connection points. So if you just need to connect things to things, this is your go-to for only three mass. The Habs are five mass, and the hull uh, is also five mass. So this is just a better option. I see so many shipbuilding videos where they don't use this, and it's like, oh my god, you could save two mass. Come on, bro. And the Deimos Bracer A is a width extender for only two mass. I'll show you what these are. So the Deimos Bracer, it's just a, it's just one of these little, it's just like a big old metal pole. You see it at the side of your ship if you want to, you know, lengthen it from the, what is that? <laughs> the port or the uh, the starboard side. Next up here is the, the, the spine, which I believe I'm using on the ship. So you can see this is the spine here. This is an aft pointed spine. This one's also pointed towards the aft. And I've got three weapons attached to each of these two little spines here. So they're pretty damn useful. And then finally, the Bracer A. It's just, uh, it's not very, you know, aesthetic looking, but it is useful. It's just, uh, it's just a six point connector. The lightest weight connector in the game. Now, the best shields are debatable, but here is my argument. I listed the class A, B, and C best shields, and here's the thing. The class C shield at 1,600 shields with the shielding passive, or the skill shielding, gives you 2,560 shields, which means you regenerate 128 shields. Uh, you regenerate twice per second, so it takes 10 seconds to fully heal your shields. Versus the Class B shields with 2,400 shields, not much less, and 168 regeneration, or 7 seconds to full heal. But here's the kicker. The Class C is 160 mass, or 16 shields per mass, and the Class B is 90 mass, or 26.6 shields per mass point. This means that I recommend the Class B shield, the 28T Defender. But if you want more shields, you can go with Class C. You'll just need stronger engines, or more engines. Let's talk about the best grav drive. Now, for freighters, this is your cargo ship. You want the Apollo GV300, and the reason why is it has the lowest mass and the highest grav jump thrust out of all of the grav drives. You need grav jump thrust on your freighters to be able to hold more cargo. For your fighter and your flyer ship, you want the R3000 Alpha. The reason why is you only need 23 grav jump to fast travel anywhere once you've explored everything. And just with 23 and some fuel tanks, you can reach every single planet to explore it the first time. Especially with Sarah as your crew member, which you'll you'll definitely have the first time you play through the game. And uh, once you have everything explored, you can fast travel anywhere with this. It's the lowest mass to thrust power that has 6 connection points. The only one that is better is the Helios 300, but it only has two connection points, which makes it harder to place on your ship. But it is technically better by four mass. The best landing gear is the Pinpoint 3G. You can buy this at Teo Astroneering, and you also acquire two of them from the Razor Leaf. Again, another reason to get to do the Mantis quest. And the reason why is it's one mass and it's three whole HP. It's the best landing gear in the entire game, so make sure you grab it. Also, I forgot to mention, you can mount weapons on this landing gear, making it even better. For fuel tanks, I have two suggestions. The Titan 550 HE tank is the lightest weight tank that you can use with the most fuel that will get you anywhere in the galaxy with only one to two stops. And if you want to go overkill, it's only four more mass, so it really depends on your build if that, you know, will alter your mobility or top speed. The M50 Ulysses HE3 tank is 250 fuel, and it's only 4 more mass, so go with either of those and you win. The best reactor is going to be dependent on if you use B or C parts on your ship, because if you have C-class parts, you need a C-class reactor or it won't let you fin finalize the build. So here we go. The math is power divided by mass equals power per mass. And so for Class C, you go with the SF40 Sheared Flow, and the numbers below are the efficiency of power. You can see the Class C is very power inefficient uh, to mass, whereas Class B does pretty damn good, and it's only one less power. So if you can spare it, you might want to go with only Class B parts for more efficiency. Class A has the most efficiency, uh, but the least amount of power. 
And then the numbers to the right of the, um, what is it, the fractional points is uh, a, a number and a slash. The number on the left is how much power it gives, and the number on the right is the mass. You can see that, that the Class A reactor is the lightest weight, 33 power, Class B, 39 power, decent weight, and Class C, it's only one more power, and it weighs way more. But you have to have a Class C reactor for a Class C ship, for Class C weapons, Class C shielding, and so on and so forth. So engines should be done absolutely last on your ship, and I'll show you why, but let me show you the best engines. For two power, the Ares DT-60s, you get two of these from the Razor Leaf or the Mantis Quest. They're Class A also. Uh, for three power, you want the Dun 71s for speed or the Ammon Dun X300 for mobility. Both are three power. And then for four power, the Poseidon DT 230s, which you almost will never ever use unless you're making massive ships. Now, here's the viable combos. for two. You can have two two power engines. So you have four total power. You can have one three power and one two power for five total power or two three power engines for a total of six engine power, which is not viable, but you would do it for heavier ships. Let me explain now how to pick the best engines for your ship. So like I said, you want to save engines for last, and, and this is why, because your mass is pretty much finalized except for your engine, so I have everything that a ship needs. I got the weapons on it, I've got the landing gears, everything's good when I do flight check. The only thing I'm getting a, a read about is the ship has too few engines. So I'm going to open the build menu and I'm going to basically just scroll through the engines and I'm going to look at this mobility and top speed. We want top speed of 150 and mobility 100. Well, if I scroll through every single engine and I can't achieve it with one single engine, like I got kind of close there. That one has 100 mobility, but only 130 top speed. Do not under any circumstances ever, ever, ever not max out your speed and mobility. Your top speed will be even faster with the, um, it, it's a skill that increases your speed. So you always want 150 so you can get the most out of that. And mobility 100 is how you turn during fights to shoot at ships that fly past you. Super important, never, 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 ever skimp on these two. So as I scroll through, there is not a single, uh, there's not a single engine that gives me 150 top speed and, and uh, 100 mobility. So what I have to do is I'm going to start with the, the best two cost, which is the Ares DT-60, and this is only 31 mobility, but let me show you why this gets a little weird. So if I put one of these bad boys on the ship, it'll give me 31 mobility and top speed. So top speed's good, we just need to worry about mobility now. Well, what's weird is that when I take another one, an Ares DT-60 engine, suddenly I get 81 mobility instead of another 31. It should be 62, but now it's 81. And now I'm using four engine power, which we generally don't want to do. And if I was to put a third one down and uh, put it there, then hey, we did it for six engine power, which that kind of sucks. I don't want to use six engine power. Yeah, it, it gets the job done, but uh, also there's an error. The ship exceeds the available credit. That means I'm too poor to afford this, um, which is not good. <laughs> not good. Uh, so maybe I should have brought more money with me, but... The point is, is that we, uh, yeah, I definitely need more money. Uh, the, the point is, is that um, we got to find an engine combination that works for us. Don't worry about the money thing. You can get money pretty easy. I just forgot to do it before recording. Uh, so how about we try a three power engine, the Dun 71. That gives us mobility and top speed. 90 and 140 is pretty good. The other one is the Amon Dun for 100 and 130. Go ahead, and we'll just get one of those, and then we'll just, uh, can I, can I attach it back here? It doesn't look like I can attach it. Uh, wow, okay, so that's not a fun place to put that item then. So I'd have to rearrange my ship a little bit more so I can, you know, get this attached maybe. Maybe raise this up by one. Can I do that? Let's see if we can do that. So raise that up by one, and then scoot that under. Nope, that doesn't work. So again, you'd have to fiddle with it and figure out what works for you, but this engine, not so much working. Uh, what about the other one? The Dun 71. Can I attach that? Maybe. Maybe it's uh, it's a thin enough boy. And yes, there we go. So we got that done. Also, I could maybe... No, I can't slide that back. We still need a little bit more top speed and mobility. I'm using three engine power at the moment. And uh, we got two errors. What's it saying? Unattached modules. Are they unattached? I don't think so. 
Everything seems to be attached to me. Uh, let's see. Did we, uh, oh, the shield is unattached. Okay, yeah, just raise that up. That's fine. All right, and so we need one more engine, and then we want two power because we're so close to the three power. And so I can just put this, <laughs> put an engine on an engine. <laughs> That's weird looking, but hey, it works. Does it work? I am too poor to afford it. Otherwise, yeah, it would technically... Nope, nope, top speed's still only 140. So no, that would not work. Uh, what else can we do here? Uh, just kind of scroll through, see if we can bump top speed to 150. It looks like we can't. So again, you really have to fiddle with it until you find one that works for you. Uh, for whatever... The, the, the reason why top speed is not going good is because this thing weighs a buttload. And so, again, just keep fiddling with it. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention this. The, here's how I, I I do my videos. I kind of format them in a way that punishes people that skip around. And for you that didn't skip around, you get the special secret, the secret sauce. The White Dwarf 3015 engine has a max top speed of 180. You should always have one of these on your ship. Uh, definitely, definitely put one of those bad boys on so that your top speed is way higher than normal. Mwah. Now, once you have one of those attached, you gotta be careful because if you attach other ones to, it'll reduce the top speed. Uh, so if you wanna play legit, you know, 150 is technically supposed to be the top speed, or you just slap another white dwarf on there, the 3015, and uh, yeah, I did go out of the menu and finalize it and then rob the chest to get my money back. And there we go, we have 100 mobility, 180 top speed, we have a... Uh, Let's see, I believe, where's the, where is the, uh, what, should, what should I call it? Oh, it's on the side here. We have a Class C reactor, so we can put on Class C weapons and parts. So we're all good to go on this little ship, and it's only 500 mass. Pretty damn decent, 1,500 shields, 1,392 hull. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it for the best parts. Now, as far as weapons go... I'm going to be doing separate videos for weapons because not everyone wants to use Disruptor, especially the cheap Disruptors. I'll show the, the fancy ones, I'll show missiles, lasers, cannons, all that kind of fun stuff for people that want to not cheese the game in that regard. So look out for that, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it, like the video because it really helps out, and uh, leave a comment because I have no social life and I like to read, I read every comment, I believe it, I, I really seriously honestly do. Now, before you go, I do want to teach you a little bit more advanced way to build ships if you want to. It cheeses the game, but essentially, I'm going to just draw it for you. If you build a ship that looks something, let's just get a big fat one here. It, it, like, let, let's say this is your landing gear, your, your cockpit, and some other crap, and then you just build a bunch of stuff upwards, and then you build a bunch of stuff outwards, and then downwards. The enemies will shoot at center mass, and this is center mass. All their lasers will go right here and not hit you at all. So you can just uh, you can just pew pew them and take zero damage. Uh, other ship designs can be something like uh, you know you can just kind of do something like that, right? And then like build downward, and then center mass would technically be like right about here, and that'll still miss you. There's there's a whole lot of things that you can technically do um, to to fool the AI into not shooting you. So that is a way to cheese the game. This is kind of my favorite design for cheesing the game. You, you go up and to the right or up and to the left on each side of the ship. And then you just kind of continue going up and to the left and right to meet at the top. And so the enemies will shoot center mass right here. And, uh, you know, the rest of your ship parts can be full of... Uh, why isn't my color changing? Hello? Weird. Okay, well, bugged out. I don't want to draw on red anymore, damn it. Eh. Come on! What the frick? Why am I stuck coloring red? There we go. Anyway, so like these parts of your ship can be weapons or cargo. You know, these parts can be decoration. It's whatever you want to do. I'm not going to do a build tutorial because it kind of, it really lames the game and cheats it out. And that's not how ships technically would fly anyway. It looks really goofy when it's landed. But you can do whatever you want. So before I end the video, let's just make sure we covered everything. We covered structures, shields, reactors. Now for Habs... Honestly, you here's the thing, right? Dang it. The two, no, 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 no. Go back. <laughs> Freaking go back. If you want more crew members, which you really shouldn't do late game, you would go you would build like two control stations or three, and that way you can have 12 crew members, which you, you don't need. 
Isolation is an amazing and powerful super buff that is way better, especially when you're leveled up. You don't need crew members because you are a one-man crew. You have particle beams four, you have shields four, etc., etc. You don't need any of them. And so, if you want crew, build control stations. If you want to reduce mass, build one by ones. Uh, for the two by one, you can have a captain's quarters that has a bed if you want. The infirmary has beds. I don't know why you need beds late game. You just heal. You just whatever. Uh, you can just regenerate your life later. Uh, so stick to the one by one by ones. You don't need any of the crafting benches. You can have, uh, you know, what, what's it called? Settlements for that. You can use uh, the constellation building for all of that stuff. And it's like one or two loading screens away. There's no reason to gimp your ship to avoid a loading screen. Grav drives, we, we covered that. Landing gear, we covered that. Fuel tanks, we covered. Engines, we covered. Dockers, cockpits, etc. The only thing we did not cover is weapons. And I will be doing separate videos for different weapon types and different weapon tiers. And a huge massive breakdown. There's not really a way to use a target dummy for weapons, so these will take time to create. But again, just subscribe. You can always unsubscribe later. I'm over 100k, and so, you know, subscribers aren't that important to me anymore. I don't think I'll ever live to see a million. But hey, you know, maybe one of you guys can uh, <laughs> record that bit, and then when I do hit a million, be like, uh, he hit a million. Meh, 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 meh. Anyway, the point is, thank you so much for watching. And, um, what? I don't know what I, oh, I didn't put another engine down, huh? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This is here. Get the damn engine down there. And let's end the let's end the freaking video already. Okay, accept it. All right, we're done. Uh, <laughs> we're done. Anyway, make sure that you leave a comment too, because I like to read them. With that said, on the right side of your screen is a video that you should absolutely watch. If you don't watch it, then what's going to happen is you're going to be eating some food. And a spider will drop down from the ceiling into your food, and it's going to ruin your meal, and then you won't want to eat whatever it is you're eating anymore. So, uh, yeah, make sure that, you, you know, you click that video on the right side of the screen so that spiders don't attack you as you eat. And I'm just going to glitch through the wall here. I've got a video on my channel about that because, you know, I just bought some engines, and uh, I'm a dirty guy, so I'm going to go get my money back. You know, I want a refund. Let me speak to the manager. <laughs> uh, see y'all later. Thank you so much. Before you go, I just wanted, I forgot to mention, the reason you want a little tiny ship and not a big monster ship is if you happen to be in an asteroid field, you're going to bump into a bunch of asteroids with a big ship, so a small ship is just superior in that regard.